I think we are so overwhelmed and frazzled by how to do all the things and be the mom and the CEO and get it all done. And so I want this show to be a place where simplicity happens, where you can sit down, grab a glass of wine or that huge mug of coffee and curl up like we're having a chat on the couch in your sunroom and strategizing about your business. My name is Joanne Bolt, and I'm obsessed with helping you get out of the messy middle and into action and profitability. Is it all rainbows and butterflies? No, my friend. So grab a glass of wine because we'll dive into it all from marketing and branding to life and more. Buckle up, Buttercup. You found your girlfriend's guide to business. This is the B Word Podcast. I'll never forget the day I decided to start this podcast. It wasn't actually the first one I'd ever started. I had one with my friend Tina Bellovo a while back. She's another real estate agent, but we never took it past around 10 episodes. So podcasting for me just wasn't in my overall thought process. But one day I was listening to this amazing book on Audible and I found myself getting out of the car, popping in my AirPods so that I could continue to hear the book and listening to the whole dang thing while I cooked dinner, like chopping an onion, crying from its fumes, and laughing at the book at the same time. Here's the thing. When the book finished, I looked around for this refill of my wine, and I thought, there's got to be more. This friendship can't be over. How do I keep it going? Because I felt like I had a friend in the author. Her stories were told so hilariously and so authentically that it was almost as if we were sitting down on the couch, spilling the beans to each other about life, love, and business. And the thing is, hearing the book on Audible let me hear her voice, which gave a lot of that personal connection for me. So then I went and found her podcast. Suddenly, this whole new world opened up to me. Yep, insert the song from The Little Mermaid. Here was a place I could keep up with her on a weekly basis. My new friend was available when I needed her to be. I thought about how I looked to her for advice and guidance, even though we'd never met. And I knew I wanted to be that kind of friend and mentor to others. I was in a season where running my real estate team was no longer fulfilling me as a person. But what I loved to do was consult and connect with other women in the real estate industry. Then the podcast was born. It was the end of 2021. And I'll be honest. 2020 had thrown me for a loop as an agent, kind of rocked me to the core as to what I wanted to do in the business. And in 2021, I took a whole new look at things and did a little bit of pivoting, exploring, and trying to figure out who Joanne Bolt was in this new world. Who did I want to be? I honestly, when I started the podcast, I had no true vision of what this podcast would eventually become. I thought I'd offer advice to women in the real estate industry because, well, that's where I have the most experience. But boy, have I discovered a few things along the way about me and my audience. I actually come from a very big marketing background. That's what I have a degree in from college. Yes, along with a degree in information technology because I'm a total geek and nerd when it comes to that stuff. I used my marketing and business knowledge to enter into the consulting world straight out of college And then I use it again in real estate when I became an agent, and I've even used it to run a national sorority in recruitment of all things. There are simply some fundamentals that intertwine together in all of it, regardless of the industry or season of life you're in. And if I look back over the years for my success, the common thread for me is always, how did I implement marketing? So I want to share with you what you can expect from the B-Word podcast in the upcoming year and how your life will improve and what areas will be forever changed every time you tune in. Don't worry, I still subscribe to the belief that episodes need to be bite-sized in length. I know how short my attention span can be and quite frankly, how little time I get myself to tune into other podcasts. So I'll drop into your ears two times a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays each and every week. Let's keep it a standing date, okay? And since my heart does get a little warm and fuzzy for my realtor friends, I'll drop a Friday podcast episode one to two times a month that's specifically for you. Those will be in the Apple exclusive subscriber episodes, and they are going to be so juicy and good to tune into. 
Literally, some of the advice and industry experts I wish I'd heard from or knew about when I got started 20 years ago. I am like the grandma in the real estate world. But real quick before we dive in, can I ask you for some help? If you've listened to this show and it has made any impact in your life or business, any teeny weeny little impact at all over the past year and a half, would you leave me a review and subscribe? In fact, Go ahead and pause this episode now and check it off your to-do list. It'll just be one less thing staring you in the face on that post-it note. It'll take less than a minute, and it makes such a massive difference for the show. The plans I have for this year are super exciting, and it'll be an encouragement in my life to see the reviews, because sometimes it gets a little lonely on the other side of the mic. So go ahead, hit pause, subscribe leave a review, and then unpause and let's keep going on the five major areas you'll improve in your life and business if you turn in to the B word this year with me. Okay, let's go. The first area is marketing and branding. I'm obsessed with branding and marketing and how it impacts and affects people's decisions. Branding is the practice of shaping a business's brand identity. When you create a brand identity, you give your business character You provide a complete narrative on what you have to offer, why you do it, and where it leads. It's also about who you're speaking to. You know, your target audience, those people I call the ideal client avatar, how you choose to communicate with them, and it provides meaning to their experience with you. It's the customer experience. Part of your brand identity shows up visually through elements like your logo or your color palette or the fonts that you choose but it's very much about the overall experience you give your clients or customers. Marketing and branding, they sound like the same thing, but actually marketing is the vessel on how you push the brand out. Branding comes before marketing, but consider marketing the voice of the brand. And I adore it. I am the girl who will download someone's slides and pick them apart to see what fonts, colors, and visual aspects they use. Why did it catch my eye? That's what I want to know. I study the language that are sent out in emails because I want to see why my brain read some emails and why I deleted others. I watch how companies show up on social media in order to study the strategies that they use. I believe that no piece of marketing is a wrong piece of marketing. It's all in how it's executed and how you experiment with it. I mean, Did you try it long enough? Did it hit the wrong or the right audience? What copy did you use that grabbed attention or pushed it away? Did a company's marketing make me like them or make me not like them? There's really no failures in marketing. There's only playing with what works and doesn't work and being okay with failing forward in your efforts. So here's a little sneak preview for you. Last year in 2022, I wanted to take a look at how I could grow my sphere of influence in ways that did not include paying for ads or social media or some of my email tactics. And I knew that as a podcaster myself, I looked to have other industry experts on my show. So I began guesting one time a month on other people's podcasts. You know what happened? I grew my email list by over a thousand names and I increased my Instagram following pretty significantly with this little marketing strategy. I'll walk you through how I did it in a four day challenge. If you want to go to www.joambolt.com forward slash pitch. Yep. You guessed it. The podcast has a new home. It's no longer robotswomen.com. It's joambolt.com because the message was getting a little muddled. So I wanted to simplify it for you. That brings me to my second way that listening to the B word will benefit you this year. Strategies. Okay, now I may be the visionary for my brand, but let me peel back the curtain a little bit for you and fill you in on a detail that drives my team crazy. And I mean like batshit crazy. I'm also an integrator. I like to get my hands dirty and I know exactly how things work. That doesn't mean I'm the best at it. I just want to know how the nuts and bolts work. Like I'm the CEO who wants to put together the blog post for the first time, plays around with a website all the time, and I want to understand the intricacies of the back end. I can tell you how the GoDaddy domain registrations work because I learned them before I put one into place. And then I hand it over to someone on my team to do. So here on the B Word, I'll walk you through all the strategies that I find to be most useful. The ups 
the downs, the ins and outs of everything from email list building, because yes, I do actually find that still to be a super essential strategy for your ROI and the growth of your business and social media marketing. My absolute favorite thing to do is what I call the strategy stack. You may have heard me mention it before if you've been around. There's simply no point in doing one thing if it can't work cross-functionally and assist your business in other ways. So stop scratching your head in puzzlement. I'll give you an example. Tossing on a post on Instagram is super fun. But tossing a post on Instagram that leads a consumer into eventually knowing, liking, and trusting you enough to give you their email address is even more fun. The cherry on top is when they begin to want to work with you. So you see the two strategies of social media and email list building actually work together and walk hand in hand for your business. That is strategy stacking at its finest. And I love taking the fundamentals that I learned in college and then I learned in the consulting world and in real estate and in the sorority world, the ones that have always worked for me. And I like to see how I can update them, modernize them, maybe give a new twist to them. You got to grow your sphere of influence in order to grow any aspect of business. So you can expect to find a lot of branding, marketing, and strategies here on the weekly. The third way that B word is going to influence your life is by simplifying it with strategies. I keep saying simplify because if you've been around the show for a hot second, you probably have heard me say one of my favorite phrases. It's so simple. It's hard. And since I want this podcast to be a place where you can take a deep breath, unclutter your mind, and find the focus in your biz you need, I wouldn't feel right if I didn't also dig into the systems I use to pull this all together. You can think of systems episodes as the board for your charcuterie plate. We'll take a little branding, a little marketing, a little strategy, and arrange it all together neatly for you with the systems, tools, and processes to make it easy to navigate. Because if there's one thing I love more than a good charcuterie plate, it's taking the overwhelm out of life. The hustle mentality may work for some, but I think it leaves you with frizzy hair and no desire to stay consistent with what you're working on. And without consistency, honey, you might as well just not do it at all. The fourth massive impact this podcast will have on you actually surprises me just a little bit. It's lifestyle. I cringe at the word lifestyle. Because all I think of when I think of the word lifestyle is like Kylie Jenner and seeing what they do with their life or trying to be like someone else. And that's not it at all. Seriously, it's the fourth area you'll improve by listening to me if you open your mind and allow yourself to lean into what you hear that is. I think back to the girl I was when I came out of college and I want to go back and kind of pat her on the head. I was that person who went to bed with a laptop on my nightstand. I woke up and worked before bothering to shower, and I didn't feel okay unless I'd answered every email in my inbox before 8 a.m. That was my first year out of college at work. Then when I went into real estate, I subscribed to the philosophy that we had to work seven days a week. We had to answer every single phone every time it rang. You know why? Because we had to be available for the almighty client, and we never knew when we were going to get the next one. Oh, but spoiler alert, there is no crisis in your business that needs to be handled at midnight after you've had a glass or two of wine. Just saying. Placing some boundaries on when and where and how your clients can reach you is healthy. Your marriage needs date nights scheduled in on the regular so that they don't get pushed into the whenever we can get to it moments in life. Your kids need you to show up. So don't think of lifestyle here as making these gorgeous photos in aesthetic post because we all know I'm not capable of that, where I give you an unrealistic view of me, my husband, our kids, and dog. Nope. I'd rather show you the real deal of being a mom who's boss, a wife who loves to cook dinner, someone who likes taking the time and setting boundaries so I'm not running ragged by the end of the day so that I can show up how I need to show up for everyone else. What shocked me the most from 2022 was honestly the amount of women, especially women, who slid into my DMs after episodes where I casually discussed being a mom and how I made the carpool run to be an efficient time to work or taking time off to play a card game with my teenager because he wanted to. 
it gave them permission to breathe and do the same. And I started to realize toward the end of last year when some of those episodes got the most response is that's what people need to hear as much as the marketing and branding. So I'm planning on opening that door a whole lot more and showing you just what's possible in the oh, not so easy balance of work and life. And finally, just to round everything out, I'm a, of course, I'm going to give the real estate advice. You all as realtors need some tips and tricks to make your business a success. I was in a very different place in my life when I started the show back in December of 2021. Scroll back and listen to that episode if you want a good laugh. No, wait, seriously, maybe don't do that because you may run off the road laughing at me during the first few. But my days as an agent have influenced so much of who I am today. The episodes I've planned in this category light me up and make me warm and fuzzy inside because they're really kind of like coaching and mentoring sessions in your ears. And now, because it is time to go and sit in that carpool line that happens five days a week, two times a day, I'll remind you to hit the subscribe button and buckle up, Buttercup. It's going to be an amazing year. You can find me right here, same time, same place, next Thursday. Oh, P.S. I wanted so badly to say, see you next Tuesday, because I drop episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. But my husband gently reminded me that the connotation of see you next Tuesday can be taken, well, kind of bad. And while I'm known for dropping the occasional F-bomb, I won't go that far. If you know, you know. See you next Thursday. 